Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in today's video, we are going to talk about Photon in Databricks. So Databricks has recently launched Photon and we are going to see how Photon helps in Databricks. What is exactly the Photon and we will actually try to run our code and compare it with and without Photon, right? So we'll go ahead and see what is Photon first. So when we talk about Photon, so Photon is basically a native vectorized query engine that is there on Databricks. It is directly compatible to all your Apache Spark API because it is written in C++. So essentially, you don't have to make any changes to your code to, uh, you know, to use Photon. So while creating the cluster itself, you can choose the uh, Photon if you want to use and then you can start, you know, working on uh, the Databricks code or your Spark code just like the way you were doing it earlier. So you don't need to make any change since it is written in C++. It is actually very much compatible to your all Apache Spark APIs, be it your Spark SQL, be it your uh, PySpark. So why do we have to use Photon in the first place? Okay, we understand it is a vectorized query engine. We understand it is written in C++, but why do we need it, right? So Photon basically helps you to enable high performance. So it will help you to run the same piece of code uh, in a highly performant manner. And in the end, you will end up using less number of machines for both your worker and your executor nodes. So in the end, you will actually save your cost. If you see the overall picture, if your code is working, the same code which you run in one hour, if that is running in you know, your 30 minutes using Photon, it gets optimized and automatically the number of machines that you will, you will be utilizing to run the same piece of code will actually be uh, less, right? And then in the end, you will end up paying less money to Azure, right? for the VMs that you are using or any cloud that you are using. Before moving ahead, we will actually see what exactly is your vectorized query engine. So basically, whenever when I say, uh, you know, Photon is a native vectorized query engine, it essentially means that whatever query you write, it will decompose your query into compute kernels, right? And these kernels will actually process your data all the in-memory format that uh, in which the data gets stored that is also a called luminar format so that is what is called as vectorization of your code it, it drastically enhances your performance now coming on to uh, basically where you can use photon where you can enable the this option of photon we are, are going to see it in the ui so if you uh, want to use Photon, you have to choose Databricks Runtime 8.3 and above because that uh, from that uh, Databricks Runtime itself, Photon is available. So whenever you create a cluster and you select a runtime, you can select a runtime above 8.3 and 8.3 and above and then you can explicitly select Photon over there and we are going to see where we can do that for sure. So basically when you talk about Photon, it uh, focuses on um you know making your sql workloads faster i will actually explain this in detail i will actually show you this as well so there are some set of operations if you uh, try to run them on photon they will actually run uh, quite faster than your normal uh, cluster without a photon so they are actually this photon is right now built uh, with the query engine which actually you know, uh, fasters your workload when you are trying to run any kind of SQL workloads. But remember that whenever you are using a runtime, including Photon, it definitely the Databricks units are charged at a little higher rate, but that gets compensated. That definitely gets compensated with the number of VMs, which will actually be reduced overall uh, through your code. So we are going to see this as well. And definitely we are well, Photon is faster because I, I have tested it. It is definitely very much faster than your Databricks runtime. Now coming on to how Photon exactly works. So when you talk about, uh, you know, your normal Spark architecture, what happens is you spare, you give your code to the Spark Summit, which actually is the driver node. And then 
the whole plan is created right your unresolved logical plan is created and a resolved logical plan is created and then a physical plan is created right so what happens when you enable photon everything remains same but uh, the engine passes over the physical plan and uh, it tries to determine which parts of the query will actually run on photon right and in in the plan actually you can go ahead and see which part of the query ran on photon and which part of the query ran on uh, the normal databricks runtime you can actually go ahead and see it so there is no uh, as such difference uh, the only thing is it tries to segregate which part of your code or which part of your query will actually go ahead and run on photon that that is the only difference that that is there in your normal architecture and an architecture with photon and yes as i already explained to you that photon is used to optimize parts of your sql query there are some operations uh, that you try to do in SQL which are highly optimized using Photon but all the features are not supported. So this is clearly evident this is okay that you know half of your code might run in the normal Databricks runtime and partially it might run in the Spark. Uh, so sorry partially it might run in Photon and partially it might run in your Databricks runtime or Spark. So this is a kind of hybrid model of execution that is uh, in present right now. So we, there might be some changes coming on in Photon later on as well. So essentially there are two ways in which you can use Photon. One I have already explained to you that while creating a new cluster, while provisioning a new cluster, you can actually select a runtime uh, including Photon. We will actually see how we can do that. And the second is that Photon is by default. It is there for Databricks SQL endpoint. So in case you are using it, it is by default there. But we will, uh, in this demo, we are actually going to see how we can, uh, you know, select it on Databricks cluster, how we can run our code on Databricks cluster using Photon. Then guys, uh, this is a chart which basically explains you how uh, much is the difference in this relative speed of a Photon and a normal Databricks runtime. So you can actually see the range from you know the Databricks runtime 2.1 to 8 and you can see how uh, you know you can actually see that the, the Photon speed is 2x of your da uh, Databricks runtime 8. Now if you see this chart explains the function. So let's say you are trying to uh, do some year or month or day operation in that case you will actually see 15x increment in the speed than your normal Databricks engine uh, normal Databricks runtime and in the similar way if you try to use date or you try to use your length substring you know in the same way you will see 18x 15x and 18x uh, performance increase so this kind of drug you know graphically represents how uh, efficient your photon is also guys till now we have talked about the photon but now let's see what are the advantages and limitations of photon so i'm going to start with the limitations first so you need to know that uh, it works on delta and parquet tables only right so in case you're trying to use your csv format your orc format or your avro or you're trying to use excel you cannot leverage photon over here so there will be no use of using photon in that case so you have to understand only for the workloads on delta and the parquet tables you have to go ahead and use your uh, photon and similarly it does not support windows or sort operator so this thing also you need to keep in mind so let's say your query is essentially using window and sort now in that case there is no point in enabling photon because that is not being used in the end right and similarly for the structured streaming if you have data coming from your iot systems in that case also you cannot use structured steam uh, you cannot use photon for structured streaming and similarly it does not support user defined functions and of course if you already have a query which takes you know very less time then in that case so querying you know a small amount of data then in that case photon is not that much useful but yes talk coming on to the advantages if you use it with the right technique it supports sql and any data and any equivalent data frame operations against delta and parquet table if you're trying to do it gives a very high performance 
right? If you're trying to process a large amount of data, which includes aggregations, joins, then it works pretty well. And similarly, uh, you know, if you want to, uh, if, you, if you have a code with uh, which caches your data a lot, in that case as well, it will try to improve the performance a lot. So guys, now let's move on to the portal. We will see how we can do this in Databricks. So guys, now you can see that I have created two cluster. The very first one is check no photon and the second one is uh, photon cluster. So uh, let's see how our check no photon looks like. So this does not have photon enabled. It says a standard cluster and it is using Databricks runtime 8.3. Right. And in the similar way, if you see the worker type, right, that is E8 and V3 and uh, the same, I'm choosing the driver type uh, for now. And uh, if you see uh, the DBUs, how much it is being charged, it is 18 right now. Right. Now, if you go to the photon cluster, again, I'm using the same same configuration. The only difference is that I have enabled photon over here. I will show you where exactly. So you can see 8.3. Right, and this is my Databricks runtime version, which is same as my previous one. Also, even my worker type and my driver type. Uh, okay, uh, let me click on edit over here and let me choose the worker type. Uh, this is the worker type which I am trying, which I have used in um, my previous uh, cluster, and the same worker and driver type I'm trying to use over here so that. You know, we make sure that to run the same workload, we are using same number of machines and with the same memory, right? But now if you see the DBU per hour here, it is 41.4, right? Just because Photon is enabled here. So this thing you need to understand that uh, it, this thing changes. But yes, this gets compensated if you are trying to run uh, large workloads. In that case, definitely it gets compensated. Also, Let's wait for the cluster to restart, then I will actually show you where we can enable the photon. In the meantime, if in fact we can go to the notebook and we can try to run a job on uh, a cluster which does not have photon enabled. After that, by the time the cluster start, we can actually see uh, where to, uh, you know, check the option for photon and try to run the same job using the photon cluster, right? Now, uh, let's see. Over here, if you see guys, uh, I'll just run this command, command number four. Let me try to zoom it. So what essentially I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to create a database. Inside that, I'm trying to create a table. And this table is using uh, the open source New York taxi data set, right? So this is an open source data set. We have been using it in our synapse video. So I guess you already know about this. So this is an open uh, data source. Uh, data set and we are trying to create a table out of this data set. So now let's go ahead and uh, this job is running and now you can see it took 29.94 seconds. Now uh, using the same table, what I'm trying to do over here is if you see this is the same table. Now I'm trying to, you know, run some SQL command over here. So now let's go ahead and run the SQL command and actually see how it goes. How much time it takes exactly. So guys, now you can see that this command ran and it took 27.15 seconds, right? Pretty, uh, you know, simple query. That is the reason it took, uh, you know, very less uh, time. Now we'll go back and we'll see whether our cluster has started or not. So guys, now you can see this photon cluster is there. Now I'll actually show you where you can enable it. So now in the Databricks runtime version, if you select on this drop down. So guys, now you can see in the standard cluster, if you see, 8.3 photon right uh, you can enable or disable this option over here so let's say you don't want to use photon now in this case you can just simply go ahead disable this option and you can select your databricks runtime now in this case you can actually see my debut per hour is 18 and uh, you can see that i don't have photon option over here now if i go and select the photon option over here and i select 8.3 version now you can see my debut per hour again has changed and it shows over here in the green that it is a photon cluster right so this is how you actually try and configure your 
uh, clusters using a photon. Now what I'll do is I will go to another notebook which is running the same piece of code and it will run it against photon cluster. So now let's go ahead and try to create a, data a database and zoom it in fact. Now what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to create a database uh, the similar way in which I have done previously using the New York taxi data set which is an open source data set. So now guys you can see that this ta the table has been created. Now let's try to using the same table and the same database let's try to run that SQL query which we ran without photon. So now guys you can see the query is here and it took 16.9 seconds to execute the same query which took uh 27.15 second without a photon cluster so this is this was just an example so maybe because of that you can't see a big difference but if you have a big workloads with terabytes of data inside a table you will be actually able to see the difference more explicitly so guys this is pretty much that i wanted to cover do let me know if you have any comments or you want to know something else about it and do try out this photon in your workloads and do let me know in the comment section did you feel the difference and uh, yeah do remember to like share and subscribe to my channel thank you so much